Hi folks, welcome to 1.5 part three. So in this video, we're actually gonna go through a Desmos activity together. Um, and then in the fourth video, we'll go back to the notes and actually go through some examples, okay? But I think that this topic is something that is um, easier to understand when you can visually see what's happening. That's why I wanted to go through this activity with us, okay? And so one of the things that we're gonna start with, all right, if we look at this over here, we have uh, a times some function, all right? So in the blue right here, we have an actual function of some sort, right? And we call that f of x. And we have a times f of x. And so what we can do here is we can actually drag this slider in the second line to kind of see what's happening. Um, and in particular, what we want to see is observe what happens as we change the value of a. All right, and we won't record them anywhere formal, uh, but we're going to talk about things and maybe write down some things in our notes later. Okay, all right, so let's see what happens as we change the value of a. So when a changes to 1.5, now I have um, this blue function, and 2, 2.5, and if I go all the way to 5, I can see that my graph the blue graph uh, becomes more like stretched out than the red graph, okay? So the red graph is the original graph, but the blue graph, that is what happens when we change A, all right? So let's see what happens if we move A all the way to 10. Yeah, we keep stretching it out. And as A gets smaller, we sort of compress it back in. And if I zoom in a little bit here, Let's see what happens when we make A smaller than one. And so now we can see that the blue curve is actually shorter than the red curve, okay? In other words, we've compressed it more. Now, as we're looking at this, it's easy for us to say, oh, the graph stretches, but we want to be specific about like what is stretching or what is shrinking, okay? So let me go back to when A is two here. And if we were to click on this point right here, negative one, negative one, okay, that's on the original function. But when we get to here, we see negative one, negative two. So it turns out that when we multiply a times f of x, we're actually changing the y value. Okay, so the red curve right here, this has the same x value. They both have an x value of negative one, but now the y value is changed to, from negative one to negative two because we multiply by two. Okay, so let's click on some other points and see if that's still the case. So I noticed this point down here is 1.5 comma negative 4.5. And if we go to the red curve, the original function has the same x value, 1.5, but the y value is half of it, right? So in other words, if I take negative 2.25 and I multiply by 2, I'm going to get this negative 4.5, okay? All right, so let's go to the next screen. It says in the equation y equals a f of x, what does a do to the original graph? So my friends, if we think back to the previous slide, we don't multiply x values by a, but rather we multiply the y values by a and keep x the same, okay? So I click this and it says we got it. So that means we got that one correct. All right, so if we have that number in front of the function, it is going to multiply the y values by that number and keep x the same. All right, well, let's make sure that we know how to do that to a specific point. So we're going to start with this first point here, negative 3 comma 1. And it says that the original picture f of x is on the left. What will happen to the three marked points on the function if we change it to three times f of x, all right? So now in this case, a is three. So we're gonna keep the x value the same, so negative three, but the y value is now three times whatever the y value was. So three times one gives me three, and that green check means, yes, I got those values correct. All right, so in other words, this point here would get stretched up 
to write about here. All right, next point, negative one comma negative one, the X value stays, but the Y value is times three. So negative one times three is not three. See, I still have a red X, but instead it is a negative three. All right, last but not least, three comma zero, three, the X value stays, the Y value is three times zero. And three times zero is not three, but three times zero is zero. So now we've got our coordinates and that's what would happen if we have a number A in the front, okay? All right, so in this function here, we let's zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. All right, but we've got this original function and it says in the second box type negative f of x. So negative f of x gives us the red curve now, all right? And they kind of make a cool design together, almost like a little bit like DNA. Um, but one thing we might notice is that this point down here was negative three, negative one, right? That's what it moved to. But up here, it was negative three comma positive one. And in the original, we had our negative one, negative one, but on our new function, we have negative one comma positive one, right? And let's try one more time on our original, we get negative 1.5 comma negative 2.25. And I bet this peak of the red curve is gonna be 1.5 comma 2.25. Yeah, there we go, okay? So if we were to record some observations, we might say that the uh, negative f of x takes our graph and actually reflects it over the x-axis. All right, so in the equation y equals negative a f of x, what does negative a do to the original graph? Well, same as before, it multiplies the y values by negative a and keeps x the same, but that negative, one thing we really want to keep in mind is that that actually causes a reflection from the original graph. All right, so let's check a little bit. The original picture is to the left. What will happen to the three marked points if the function is changed to negative six times f of x? And so it turns out we're gonna keep all of the x values the same. So negative three, negative one, and three, but all the y values now get multiplied not by three, but by negative six. So one times negative six is negative six negative one times negative six is a positive six, and zero times six, still zero, okay? So in other words, we're gonna stretch the graph, but we're also reflecting it across the x-axis. All right, so now let's take a look at adding a new letter, okay? So we have the a times f of x, but now we also have this plus d. So I'm gonna keep a as one, and I'm gonna move the D slider around to see what happens to the graph, okay? Now this graph is going to be the purple one that we're looking at. All right, so I'm gonna move D and as I make D more positive, ooh, D is two, it looks like I've moved my graph up two units. I wonder what will happen if we move this graph to four or D to four. Oh, yep. Now I've moved this point all the way up to here, okay? Now what happens if D is negative though? Negative two, oh, negative three, negative four, negative five. All right, so if D is negative, we're moving the graph down. And if D is positive, we're moving the graph up. All right, so in the equation y equals f of x plus d, what does d do to the original graph? Well, we add d to the y values and we keep the x the same. All right, original picture's there. Now we want to see what happens when the function is changed to f of x minus 5. All right, now all my x values going to stay the same. But on my y values, now I'm not multiplying by negative five. It's f of x minus five. So I take all of the y values and I 
subtract five so that that's the same as sliding the graph down, okay? So one minus five is negative four. Negative one minus five is negative six. And zero minus five is negative five. All right, and so that's where all those new points would be. All right, let's combine some things. The original picture is on the left. What will happen to the three marked points if the function is changed to now I have negative two as my A and three as my D. Now I know that A and D don't change the X value. So I'm gonna go ahead and type those in. A of three, negative one, three. But the Y values, I actually have to multiply by the negative two first and then add the three. So it's just like order of operation, okay? So one times negative two is negative two, and then negative two plus three is one, all right? Great. Now we're gonna try the same thing, but plugging in negative one. Negative one times negative two is two. 2 plus 3 is 5. And last but not least, we're going to plug in 0. So negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. All right. So this would look like if you stretched it, reflected it, and moved the whole graph up 3. All right, well, let's take a look at adding another letter now. Now we've got A on the outside, we've got plus D at the end, and inside the parentheses, we're actually inputting B times X now, all right? So not just B, or not just X, but BX. And so I'm gonna move this slider around, all right? When B is one, it is the same as the original. But let's see what happens if we move B to two. Ah, looks like that purple graph now got skinnier or thinner. All right, what happens if we make B less than one? Oh, now that looks like it's stretching out when B is between zero and one, okay? So let's see that one more time. Compression or squeezing in and stretching or pulling, pulling the edges of the function out from the center. Okay. All right. So in the equation y equals f of bx, what does the b do to the original graph? Now we're not adding B to X or Y, but in this case, we're actually changing the X values, okay? And in fact, we are multiplying the X values by one over B, all right? So let's go back to the previous slide and make sure that we got that, okay? So I'm gonna actually make B two, all right? That means in my equation, I have two X, and what did that do to the X values? So let's see, the X value here was negative three, but the X value here is negative 1.5. All right, so negative three times one over two gets me negative 1.5, right? Let's try a different point. This one was at negative two comma zero. If I multiply that by one over two, I get to negative one over zero or negative one comma zero, okay? So we definitely see that things are squeezing in when B is greater than one, right? And in fact, we are multiplying those X values by one over B in order to get that. All right, so the original picture is on the left. What will happen to the three marked points if the function is changed to F of one half x. All right. So now this time, I know that all the y values stay the same. So let's go ahead and type those in. One, negative one, and zero. 
But what's changing is the X values, all right? So now this is a little tricky. We got to take our negative three, our X value. We're going to multiply it by one over one half, okay? So one over one half is actually the same thing as saying times two. So negative three times two is negative six, all right? Negative one times two is negative two, and three times two is six, all right? So even though there's a one half in there, we have to multiply by one over one half, which is the same as multiplying by two. All right, in this box, type f of negative x. So now we want to think, what happens when we have a negative x in the input? Okay, so this is kind of like that other slide where we said, well, what happens when we have a negative a in front of it, negative f of x? That was a reflection over the x-axis. Ah, now this one looks to be a reflection over the y-axis, right? So when I change the x's to be the other sign, I flip over the y-axis. All right, in the equation y equals f of negative b, what does negative b to, to do to the graph? Multiply the x values by negative one over b and keep y the same. All right, the original picture is on the left. What will happen to the three marked points if the function is changed to f of negative x? All right, y values all stay the same, but the x values we multiply by negative one over one. Three, negative one times negative one is one. Three times negative one is negative three. All right, we are adding one final letter and that is our friend C, the letter C, okay? So, if we have, let's make D zero again, all right? Now, what happens when we move our C? So I make C a positive number, it slides to the right. And if I make C negative, it slides to the left, okay? But here's one thing I really want us to notice. It says X minus C. So when I say X is, or when C is four, that means in my equation, it really looks like X minus four, okay? So when we see in the equation X minus four, or let's say X minus six, that means we're moving to the right three or, three or six units. Okay, but if I have negative three for C in my equation, that's X minus negative three, which is the same as X plus three. So if my equation says X plus three, I actually move to the left three units. Okay, and that can be tricky. So it's okay if you need to watch that part again. All right, so in the original equation, y equals f of x minus c, what does c do to the original graph? We add c to not the y values, but the x values, and we keep y the same, All right? So we're moving things in a specific direction, shifting horizontally. All right, the original graph is pictured to the left. What will happen to the three marked points if the function is changed to x minus five? All right, so x minus five really moves, means I'm moving my graph five units to the right. That means that the y values are all staying the same, all right? But my x values now, I'm moving to the right, I gotta add five. So negative three plus five is two, all right? Negative one plus five is four, and three plus five is eight. All right, so even though this is x minus five, I need to slide everything to the positive direction. 
All right, let's finish off with a thing where we're changing both the X and the Y. All right, so original pictures on the left. What will happen to the three marked points if the function is changed to F of X plus one minus two? Now, the plus one means we move to the left one. The minus two means we move down two, okay? So my x value was negative 3. If I go 1 to the left, it's negative 4. And then if I start at negative 1 and I go 1 to the left, that's negative 2. And if I take 3 and move it 1 to the left, I get 2. So those are all my x values. But what about the minus 2 here? Well, that, my friends, changes all the y values by sliding things down 2. So one minus two is negative one. Negative one minus two is negative three. And zero minus two is negative two, all right? So that's sort of how we work with these things called graph transformations. Each number is in a special place for a special reason. And we'll go over that in part four of the video, all right? So I'll see you folks back there.